All right, thanks for staying with us now. Nigeria's 2023 general elections, of course, which held on the 25th of February, as on Saturday, and some places the voting extended to Sunday, 26th of February, had, of course, I mean, everybody will know that had some glitches, right? The INEC chairman, Yakubu Mohammed, declared Tinubu as the president elect, you know, and Ashwaju, he got um, some votes of over 8 million to defeat Atiku that had about over 6.9 and Peter will be following behind with 6.1 million votes. And the result of the 2023 election vis-a-vis -vis the various anomalies witnessed by the citizens within the few days uh, or within a few days now has left a lot of mixed reactions. So we're asking what are your thoughts on the INEC, um, INEC conduction of this particular elections and generally what you think about the 2023 general elections. That's the question for tonight, 2023 <laughs> has come upon us and it has happened. All right, so let's hear your thoughts. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081 803 You can also tweet at us at Wayshow Africa 1 with a hashtag Wayshow. So quickly, ladies, I just want to hear two minutes because I have, I think I, our guest is with us already on standby. Oh, Jennifer, we already heard your thoughts yesterday. So let me just come to, Je to, to EC and Glory. What are your thoughts generally on the 2023 elections? You know, what are your thoughts on INEC? Quickly. EC, oh, did we lose your audio? EC, we can't we can hear you. Can you hear me? Can you unmute yourself if you're muted or something? Go ahead. Yes, I can. So I gave you an insight into how I really felt about it. And when I even talked to other people about it, they actually expressed the same thing I was actually feeling. I felt that the, electoral, the electoral process could have been done in a better way. But what we experienced was a total disregard for the electoral process, a total disregard for the citizens that actually came out to participate and um, cast their vote. And we also experienced a total disregard for individuals who were um, who were disenfranchised in in the electoral process as well. So yes, it could have been conducted in a better way from the moment we casted our vote to the moment we actually um, had it uploaded to the process, the, the whole process, the whole fiasco of the election. <laughs> That a situation whereby we had individuals who were um, hurt in the process. So I felt it was a total failure as far as I was concerned. You, what you, what's your thoughts? And I'll bring in our guest. Um, so I, I, I promised myself, like, I will not talk a lot about this because whenever I, from when the votes were casted on Saturday, and the way the whole everything went um, turned out was really, really discouraging. A lot of lots of emotions for me, and it was a total mess. Um, to be honest, so many disregard on the side of INEC. They disre disregarded many things, their promises, and and it it was a total mess technically, operationally, everything. So I had high hopes for this 2023 election because there was just this constant reminder that it's going to be free and fair and very transparent. And I think like that's what most Nigerians held on to, to vote. There were so many first-time voters because for once, they believed that their votes were going to count for something. And to know that some of them, after going through the struggle of even getting their PVCs, so many people struggled a lot to get their PVC. They're willing to go all the way just to get it. And at the end of the day, most of them did not even vote. Or most of them were disenfranchised. Some of them were hurt. And the fact that citizens talked about it over and over, international bodies were saying, okay. And INEC just kept a deaf ear. It's, it's like, it's so, I don't know what to say, Owa, to be honest. I don't know what to say. But okay. it's really disappointing. Let me bring in our guest, David Hudai, who's an investigative journalist and um, 2023 distinguished James Curry Fellow at the University of Cambridge Centre 
of African Studies. He's a broadcaster whose work has appeared on CNN, Al Jazeera, The Africa Report, Washington Post, um, his work as a satirist on the other news. Nigeria's answer to Daily Show has featured in New York, um, New Yorker magazine and in Netflix um, documentary Larry Charles' Dangerous World of Comedy. And I think David Huday has joined us via Zoom. Thank you so much, David, for joining us tonight. Thank you for having me. Okay, well, <laughs> we have been shouting 2023, 2023, road to 2023. 2023 has come and it has gone. <laughs> um, February 25th. First of all, um, I want to hear your thoughts on just the general overview. If you were to rate INEC, how would you rate the elections for the 2023 presidential elections that was, was held on Saturday? So if, uh, first of all, I'm going to try as much as possible to be, um, to be as balanced um, as I can be, because obviously I'm not trying to get you taken off air or find five million naira. So bear with me. Um, if there is such a thing as a negative score, something below zero to give to INEC, that would be what I would score them. Because merely giving them a low score would be to indicate that maybe they, they tried, but it wasn't good enough. That was not the case here. This was a case that this was an election that was actively stolen, that was actively manipulated, and we saw it happen in real time. I have never seen anything like this before, where in an election is going on, and obviously because of the the, the Electoral Amendment Act 2022 and the the BVAS, uh, the the provision for for the BVAS system that was made, and the fact that uh, party agents get to take photos of the results sheet, so we could actually see in real time what was happening, in what direction the vote was going, and then. In my opinion, the most important part of the Electoral Act, the part which went to court several times, <laughs> which stated that uh, the results must be transmitted electronically directly from the polling units via the BVAS to the central INEX server, all of a sudden, that became optional. So we were playing a game, and in the middle of the game, the rules were changed and the goalposts were shifted. I've never seen where that happens before. I don't understand it. And after that has happened, and there was this incredible this shift of voting patterns, including, um, you know, someone went winning 80,000 people, uh, winning 80,000 votes in a single local government, while, you know, none of the other parties managed above 4,000. And this is a state which historically has always voted the opposite way. And all of a sudden, in, and there were all these videos coming out, authenticated videos coming out, showing all manner of thuggery, all, my, all manner of acts of violence. You had people going to polling booths and telling people, uh, if, uh, if, if you don't if, vote if a certain burn, party, they, they bought any Igbo well, made them vote here. And we know the person who said that. And that person is still walking around a free man. I was celebrating this morning that his candidate has been declared the winner, apparently. Mm -hmm. I don't know how this makes any sense. There is nobody I've engaged with over here in London who is monitoring the situation who has anything positive to say about this. In fact, the the sense that I got from the people that I've been interacting with over the past few days was that they fully expected the INEC chairman, uh, uh, Yakubu Mahmoud, to at least pause, pause the, 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 the announcement process and you know, announce some sort of palliative measures. Maybe there should be a recount, something should be done because clearly this vote was completely compromised. Clearly, it was very obvious. We had videos from inside a, a, a collation center where you could see people altering vote figures inside the collation center. This, you know, previously we've had stories about how INEC is compromised. This person paid that person. This time around, we saw everything in 4K. Hmm. We had, we, there was a recorded, an authenticated video, by the way, because the uh, audio, by the way, because the person in the audio has come out and admitted that he was the one. Someone boasting, an INEC uh, contractor boasting that his boss, who was apparently declared winner by INEC, paid $170 million to the, $170 million to the INEC chair. And that's how he's going to win the election, boasting loudly. And this, all these are out in the open. And somehow, I missed all of this, INEC went out at 4 a.m. in the dead of the night when everyone was asleep and announced somebody as a winner. How does this make any sense? Are we even pre pretending to practice 
uh, a democracy as a system of government anymore. Because the basic premise of democracy is that it's a government of the people for the people by the people, which means the people choose their own leadership. The people made a choice on Saturday. They were voting a certain way. They voted for a certain candidate. And then some other person said, no, regardless of what the people say, that's, that doesn't have anything to do with me. I'm not interested. I'm going to take what the people said, throw it away, and then write my own thing and impose myself onto the people. How is that a democracy? How is that democratic? Hmm. You know, and I, I, the, 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 and I'll just quickly close with this, that the, the slippery slope here, right? The big issue here is not that some, it's not even that somebody who has no business in that office is in that office, right? Yes, he has no business in that office, but that's not even the main issue here. The main issue is that the precedent that has been established here is that there does not need to be any respect, any, any pretense of respect for the democratic process, for the electoral process. This Pandora's box that has been opened now, if somehow maybe the court system or whoever has the power to stop this now doesn't exercise that power, what it means is that the next time around, or even going forward beyond that, this baseline has been established that since apparently this is what an acceptable election looks like in Nigeria, then the next time, anyone who wants to win power in Nigeria now knows that the secret is not organizing at the grassroots level, it's not canvassing for votes, it's not making people believe in you the way you know a certain candidate did and, and the majority of people warmed up to that. No, that's not how you win elections in Nigeria. How you win elections in Nigeria is by deploying violence, full stop, nothing more. Hmm. And the precedence that that has created, the problems that are going to be waiting for us in front, I don't think the people who think that, they, that they've that they won now understand the kind of problems they've created for themselves going forward, because this is going to consume all of us. Wow. So, David, I, and I, I hear you loud and clear and, you know, because we have dwelt so much on what went wrong, mm -hmm. right? And if ever there was going to be a solution to some of these anomalies that happened, right? Do you think going to, because for the INEC chair to just say it flippant, like go to court, the president has also come out to give a statement to say that if you have a problem with the way the elections went, go to court. It's almost like, no. We already have those people in our pockets, so go and try your luck. That's, that's how we're reading the process. And like you rightly said, you know, it's one thing for you to celebrate a victory now, but what you, what you have just done is that you have told the generations to come that they have no business doing anything the right way, right? That's what they have said, as far as I am concerned. I feel so pained, not even for myself, for my children, for the other children that are growing and they are watching us do what we're doing now. Because what you have said is that Nigeria is a lawless place, that even if they set some rules and regulation, don't follow, you'll be fine. It's just like somebody has said before that uh, if you want to steal in this country, steal in, in hundreds of billions. You understand? Don't steal small money. Because if you steal small money, they'll throw in kirikiri. But if you steal enough to be able to just bribe every party, you know, whatever you have has changed left, you'll still be good. That is, you know, so, and I, and I see it play out, and I don't even know how to express how I feel. I am not about any political party. I'm about the integrity of the process, right? And as far as I'm concerned, INEC failed that integrity test. So what would a solution look like for a country where they don't even respect the rules that they wrote, and you're not telling us to go back to those judiciary? How would that play out? So um, I'm not, um, I'm similarly not convinced that the judiciary is going to um, do the job that they're supposed to do. I mean, this is the same judiciary where um, I believe it was Imo State um, when there was a, there was a there was an election um, there was a post election tribunal before it, and somehow the candidate who came forth in the election was pronounced governor, right, and which has created a never ending crisis for Imo State, because that governor is an illegitimate governor. He can't govern the state. He doesn't even live in Imo State. That state is ungovernable to him. We who are celebrating victory don't seem to understand that Nigeria is going to become an ungovernable space 
for somebody who imposes himself on it. And it's going to be bad for all of us. Now, what the judiciary is supposed to do, obviously, is basically order a revolt, right? Not even a recount, a revolt, right? Because that entire election should be rolled up and thrown into the dustbin. That was absolute nonsense that was done. That was a, that was a, a display of, of tomfoolery, a show of shame. That's what the, the judiciary should do. However, we know that the judiciary in Nigeria has not exactly covered itself with glory. This was the same judiciary that, um, I believe it was Senator, Senator Ahmed Lawan, who didn't take part in his party's primaries, was you know awarded his party's ticket also by the same judiciary. Nigeria is a place where the judiciary is very much a part of the corruption that the country is famed for. If you have enough money or enough influence or enough access, you can get anything you want with the same judiciary. So that's that's the issue now. So from from my mind, to my mind, my reading of the situation tells me that there are only two viable options for going forward now. Um, those two viable options, um, I can't decide which of them is worse because they are both two very bad options. The first option would be for um, basically the international community as one to denounce this result. I, I found it very instructive that despite INEC having announced this thing as far back as 4 a.m., to the best of my knowledge, no significant country um, or representative of any country so far has actually congratulated the supposed president-elect to date. I found that very instructive. Um, and that says a whole lot. Um, the, if the international community were to come together as one to denounce this election and to state that this is an illegitimate victory and that um, this needs to be redone, um, I believe the, the sheer amount of diplomatic pressure on Nigeria would force Nigeria to do the right thing. However, that's very unlikely because, again, we're just not that important to the world in general. The second option, which I, I'm not going to mention on live TV, but I'm sure we know what that option is. I don't think anybody wants that either, because that would probably end up being worse for everyone in the long run. So uh, all I just I, I, I cannot see how this can possibly end well. And to, to my mind, I feel as if the decision to go ahead with that announcement at 4 a.m., someday that thing is going to be written about in history books as some sort of inflection point in the modern story of Nigeria and not for good reasons. Okay. Let's go on a break, EC. I'll come to you, EC, and I come okay. to you, Glory. Let's just go on a very short break. We'll be right back. Stay with us. All right, thanks for staying with us. Now, if you just tuned in, we're discussing the 2023 general elections and INEC, of course, and we still have with us David Hundai. Um, remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 803 You can also tweet at us at WaysShowAfrica1 with the hashtag WaysShow. Isi, over to you. You had a question. All right. Um, hi, David. Um, my question is, um, let me start with a, a premise, basically. We have the emotions of Nigerians currently is already running high, basically. And we are all... Um, should I say, um, I wouldn't put the word hopeless, but we are close to being hopeless, basically, right now. Look at Uwa saying something about the integrity of the process being compromised, basically, by INEC. So let's look at it from the accountability perspective. Do you think that we as Nigerians could actually hold INEC accountable? How do we bring them, or how do we make INET accountable for what has happened during the last election? The only way to do that would be for some sort of um, organic, spontaneous, national, you know, national, nationwide uh, protest to take place. Because at this point, um, only direct action will work. However, um, clearly that direct action isn't going to work um, for... A, a number of reasons, not least of which is that the 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 popular candidates who you know, as any and anyone who has any sort of understanding of data will tell you, should have won the election um, or or did win the election before he had it stolen from him. That candidate himself hasn't come out to say anything. So no, he, um, actually, it's very issued, he to... actually issued um, a statement once there, there was a declaration of um, the president elect. He issued a statement. Yes, but yeah, I mean, it, he has not come out to say anything substantial or anything that would energize his support base. But, 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 if yeah, anything, but David, David, 
I see now this is where I want to beg the Nigerian youth. We've tried protest in the past. It's not gonna work. For somebody that doesn't respect the rule of law, that don't have values for human lives. Protest, right? you know, protest doesn't necessarily mean you know, protest protest doesn't necessarily have to mean um, direct on street action. Protest okay. can even be online. Okay. From the cyber. Yes. But what I but what I've observed is that the energy has fallen. The energy has definitely flagged. There has been there has been a, a loss of spirit, and a lot of this is down to the fact that the candidate himself has not come out to speak. Um, I I mean, I'm not I'm not part of his campaign structure, so I can't speak for him. Um, in in my own little capacity as a private citizen, I did try to reach out. Funny enough, on Sunday, and what I was basically told was, well, you know. When the results are announced, I'll 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 say something. But um, so far that hasn't really materialized. You know, I think so. Um, if there is to be some sort of a reckoning for the Independent National Electoral Commission, it will have to come from young Nigerians themselves um, demanding for this to take place. But that isn't happening, and I can't entirely blame them because you can imagine if for the past year of your life you've been building up to this event, as you as you mentioned earlier. The struggle to get the PVC that was a that was that was another saga in itself, and millions of people were already were already disenfranchised that way. There was already pre-vote rigging that way because PVCs from certain parts of the country, which are, which are strong, which are thought to be strongholds of certain people, were not delivered, and then you were seeing PVCs turning up in forests and in drains and getting burnt and all sorts of shenanigans, and then the people who got past that um, that whole you know drama and still managed to get hold of their PVCs, then had to come out on election. First had to find out which, you know, whether their PVCs were even going to be valid to vote on the day, because in some cases they were transferred to polling units that they weren't even aware of. Some found out on the day of the election, right? They got past that. And then on the day of the election, they had to be brave enough to come out, knowing that there was going to be violence and thuggery and to defend mm -hmm. their votes. They still came out. And after all of that, they made sure they voted. Mm -hmm. Right, and they voted, and they waited to the end. They thought they were protecting their votes. They saw the result sheets. They were celebrating, right? I was celebrating. We were all celebrating when we saw these results sheets coming in. That fight, fight, you know, regardless of whether it's even our preferred candidate or not that is winning, just the fact of this being an electoral exercise and it being apparently so transparent, and we are actually taking part in this, and we are all coming together as a collective. We all felt this sense of ownership over our country for the first time. And then, out of nowhere, the old guard comes in and says, you young people think you own this country. No, you don't. We do. And it basically takes it. Like, it was so cartoonish. So I can, I can understand why um, a, 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 no, a large number of the, of the youth population seems to be um, unwilling to really engage anymore. And the, the usual suspects from you know from the the camp of you know who have taken over the internet space now and are floating all sorts of kites that okay the election has come and gone we all need to move on blah 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 you know i think kyle fire me came out and said he, he mooted the idea of uh, forming a government of national unity which is the closest thing i've ever seen to an admittance that hey we didn't win this election but let's just try and pacify you because you know that's that's the best deal on the table you know it's also farcical so um to be honest i think the ball really is in peter Obi's court and i mean if he's watching this no i don't think i don't think, think this election and, and guess what david and i think i need to it would be nice for, at this point to correct something because people People out there, they think that this election was about Peter Obi. Trust me, it would have been anybody on that ballot, right? It was never about Peter Obi as a person. Jonathan, it was just about Nigerian people expressing, um, yes. uh, what's it called? They are, their frustration on the kind of leadership that they've had over the years. Yes. So it could have been a yes, term, but whoever on that ballot box nobody cared it was never about the peter obi yes it was about the yes nigerians taking ch um, charge of their country back right it was yes, not about peter yes, obi. Is, but let me true. come to glory that and i'll come true. to you jennifer um so david i i just want to ask do you think there is possibility of a rerun if the candidates go to court do you think there's any possibility of a rerun there is always a possibility. Um, the what we should be worried about is probability. Um, 
<laughs> possibility always exists, but in Nigeria, is it probable? That's what we don't know. Um, because the, as I said, the judiciary hasn't, hasn't covered itself with glory in the past. So if we're going by past precedents, um, has the Nigerian judiciary ever stood up to a Nigerian head of state before or to a, a head of state to be before? I don't think that has ever happened before. Certainly not, not in the Fourth Republic. It's, there's simply no precedent for it yet. So if we're going by precedent and, and also going by the fact that there, there are people who, who are currently on the, on, on the Supreme Court who are quite friendly to the supposed, you know, the purported winner of, of the election, or the person who was declared winner of the election. So there is everything to suggest that, yes, there will be a court process. And in the face of all the overwhelming evidence that will be presented, because there will be, there is overwhelming evidence that will be presented. I have seen some of this personally in my own two eyes. But in the face of all of this, we know how Nigeria... You know Nigerian that process can happen. take four years, though. It can take a couple No, actually, time. it won't. It won't because under the Electoral Amendment Act... I've just followed the law that specified. there was... You, David, you are sounding like there was a law well, in this election. Wait, they did not follow it. Is it, is it. is it this other one they will follow? It's specified that before May 29, before the swearing-in, any post uh, post election tribunal has to be concluded. It's specified. Was it not specified so, I mean, in the they... INEC? Wait now. Was it not specified in the INEC Act that a result must be transmitted at polling units? Was it not specified? It was. was it not clearly specified Apparently, that if they, if they don't transmit the result, they annul those elections or cancel those um, uh, those polling units? Ha. To be honest, to be honest, I like this is one of those situations where like. I don't really have anything to say because, you know, I, it almost sounds like I'm defending INEC and it makes me look really foolish because actually what you're saying is true. They, you know, they shift, they shifted the goalposts in the middle of the game. So, I, you know, Jennifer, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> as much as, I, mean, I, I get where you're coming from and I don't think you sound anyhow um, talking like this because a lot of people are currently very dejected and sad and they've just accepted their faith. And then the people who still have a little bit of hope keep saying, oh, yeah, we can take it to court. We can um, rally people up and say, oh, we can accept this result and something can be done about it, which is totally okay because people want to believe in something. They want to believe that there is a good somewhere that um, the government or even the judiciary can can do something. They can step in and make a change. They can step in and say something and it will happen. But looking at Nigerians' history and, I mean, looking at this particular election, for example, <laughs> it's quite shocking. And there are people who have, res they just said, you know what, there's no hope anymore. Because if something like this can happen in real time on live TV and we can see it happen, then there is no hope. Nothing can happen. And honestly, I, I, I don't know what we can do as, um, as citizens. I don't know where we stand. I don't know what action we need to take. But we can only hope for the best. I mean, I've seen people who have started saying, okay, I think you, can, you need to start putting your JAPA plans in motion. And honestly, how many people can run and leave their country? I honestly don't want to leave my country because I know how tough it is out there. Even with people who are able to leave, we see the lies that they live. Social media just makes it look really interesting and really nice. But the honest truth is that's not the reality of things for a lot of people. People want to come back home. People miss their families. They want to be here. But with the way it is right now, it's like there is no hope anymore. <laughs> and I'm not lost hope, oh, to be honest. I woke up this morning and I heard the news. I just, I wanted to be sad. But I just smiled and I said no. I'm not going to lose hope. I mean, we still have Jennifer. up until May 29th. Yeah. Something can be done. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Let, me just, let me just debunk a little thing you just said in terms of, you know, people saying that there would there is no other place that they can actually go to. Somebody actually told me in terms of, in the term of Jack Bain, that um, he would rather face racism than face what he went through last Saturday again and again, coming from his people. So you can imagine the level of disregard and demoralization in that individual uh, for, the, for the system, for, the, for INEC, for Nigeria currently. 
It's it's abysmal. David. Likely. David, yo. <laughs> David, yes. David, as David left us. <laughs> I'm no, here. David, don't yeah, leave us. Here. <laughs> David is speechless. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the way forward? I don't think people are demoralized. I think it has even further angered people to want yeah, to go out of, March 11th to go for the governorship um, seats, right? Um, but again, I've always said to people that if you understand this game, is a psychological game. Mm. So they would rather Absolutely. sacrifice certain states you know, to get central power because central power in Nigeria is everything, yeah. right? Um, but if you had one thing to say, right? Because um, maybe, because some, I'm, I'm seeing some people, I mean, you have talked about international um, communities. Do we really have a chance? Because I've seen petitions flying all over the place. People are saying, oh, let's sign petition against the INEC chairman. Do you think, you know, if we want to really hold them by the jugular, those are the kinds of protests that we're looking forward to doing or should we just keep quiet and watch this thing play out so the reason i the reason i i said that um local protests is pretty much the only thing that will have an effect is that the international community isn't going to take any action the, uh, let me be clear about something they are very well aware yeah. of everything that happened on Saturday and they know that this was a stolen election mm. they know that bola metinibu did not win that election they are very well aware and it will not make any difference to them. They will congratulate him eventually and they will relate with him. They will send their ambassadors to present their, their credentials to him. And they will, they will they will they do it all the time. And the reason they're going to do this is because, and I know this based on a conversation I had with, with someone from the EU mission to Nigeria a, a couple of years ago. And I never I never forgot this conversation because it encapsulated the way that the Western world thinks of Nigeria. Thanks. So he basically said that look. Because I asked him, like, in the aftermath of NSTARS and, you know, the massacres that happened, why didn't you guys do anything? Why were you, you were letting Buhari fly into your countries freely? There was no pushback whatsoever. You didn't even acknowledge our plight. Those of us who had to flee the country, we just sort of left us in the lurch. What is going on? And what the guy said was, look, um, our most important priority when engaging with Nigeria is to maintain stability. Uh, what we absolutely do not want under any circumstances is two or three million new illegal migrants showing up on the hmm. shores of Lampedusa <laughs> in southern Italy or Greece or the, Canary, the Grand Canaria in Spain. That's what the, the priority is. So if you can maintain stability, i.e. the status quo, then that's fine from the Western point of view. Because if you overwhelm the EU with, with immigration that it cannot sustain, the EU collapses, <laughs> that has... that basically alters the entire power balance of the world. Because if the EU collapses, then you have issues with NATO, then that, that alters the power balance of the world in favor of Russia and China. The North Korea is in there somewhere. So basically, from their point of view, maintaining Africa as a stable entity is the number one priority. Now, unfortunately, what their definition of stability means mm -hmm. is that if the person who is in charge, regardless of how terrible that person is, as long as that person is able to maintain some semblance of statehood and the state does not completely fail, they consider that to be stability. And if there is anything which might lead to some sort of uh, maybe like um, something that will shake up the established order, something which might lead to a better outcome, but in the interim there will be some chaos, they are going to do everything that they can to ensure that that chaos doesn't happen, right? Up to and including, you know, arming the government that wants to shoot down its citizens, they will happily do it. This is what this guy said, right? So from their point of view now, um, if there is any, you know, sort of um, engagement with the internet, uh, you know, I've, I've seen people like the former ex-president, Ulisha Gobasanjo, who, as you know, is very well connected internationally, come out and make this sort of presidential sounding speech, you know, gave a press briefing, released a statement and all of that. And obviously, if you know, if you know how these things work and if you know Basanjo, um, as a you know, as a, as an operator, you know that he wasn't speaking to Buhari or speaking to the Nigerian people. He was speaking to the foreign community. That was a performance that he put on. He was signaling that hey, you guys need to put pressure on these people. But they didn't put any pressure. It didn't work. And from what I can tell, um, they're not going to do anything because from their point of view, well, you know, Nigerian youth haven't hit the streets. They are monitoring the situation carefully. But from what you can see, well, it seems like 
they are going to accept it. Okay, that's fine. We'll we'll manage it. You know, it's not ideal, but we'll manage it because the alternative then, from their point of view, will be to shake up something that isn't. You know, it's not broken. So why do you want to fix it? Hmm. You know, hmm. so just leave it as it is. So no, they're not going to do anything. So if anyone is going to save us, it will have to be us. How, now, how saving ourselves? Let's how that is going coming. to happen? Hmm. I don't know. How that is going to happen? We don't know yet. Quickly, co let's take mm -hmm. comments quickly. Okay, so I have two comments here. The first one says, Tinibu is the INEC officer and the chairman itself. Then the second comment goes, Good evening, my dear beautiful sisters of what are you saying? Hashtag ways. INEC and the 2023 general election. Type in this comment now. I am heartbroken and devastated that someone who does not deserve to win an election is declared winner. I see today as Black Wednesday, and I don't think I can ever forget today. If this is how our election is being conducted, I am sorry that I may end up not voting on the 11th of March. Please no. I want to seize this opportunity to thank the INEC chairman and those that are involved for a successful falsification of results and rigging. They deserve a gold medal and World Cup for this. Sister Uwa and my other beautiful sisters in the studio, I am the saddest man on this planet for now. Millions of Nigerians are not happy, and this is highly unacceptable. I slept last night and woke up this morning and received this bombshell. My name is Daniel Ilo, Ways regular fan. Thank you, Thank you, Daniel. Go ahead, uh, Isi, quickly, and uh, Glory. All right. My, my comment goes first. Good evening to the Ways crew. I congratulate INEC and the president-elect on the eventual climax and hope lessons have been learned. His name is Wale Aduroja. Adur Aduroja, yes. Thank you. Glory. Um, this is from James Yube. He says, I want Labour Party and PDP to urge the international communities to condemn the outcome of the election. And this is from Gift of Voice. She says, greetings everyone. The current situation in Nigeria is disheartening and disappointing. I agree with your guest that said that the judiciary system is not trustworthy and has zero integrity. I pray for God's intervention and that justice will prevail and reign in Nigeria. David, would have to bring you back because this conversation definitely, the marathon just started. This is not a sprint, it's a marathon. Anybody that Absolutely. understands court cases in Nigeria, you know that it's not a... And now you're May 29 to not work. <laughs> <laughs> but hey... Uh, we'll just keep it, leave it here, but would hope to bring you back, you know, as much as often as we can to just keep the conversation going. And like you rightly said, the morale is dropping, but if we keep the conversation on the table, we would definitely um, have a good outcome for this. All right, so thank you so much for watching. Now, before we go, ensure, thank you, ladies. Thank you, David. Um, follow thank us across all our social media platforms at Way Show Africa. You can interact with us further and drop a comment. And more importantly, Follow all our engagements on social media, like, share, and invite your families and friends to watch and follow the conversation. If you missed our quote today, can I find that quote quickly? Uh, from Mahatma Gandhi, it says, um, truth never damages a cause that is just, right? Once there is truth, that cause that is just will be secured. It can never be damaged. So all we are seeking for is integrity and truth in this process of our elections. Everything we do in Nigeria, let's just start to add in integrity as an ingredient. We'll see you guys live at 8 p.m. tomorrow. Tomorrow is a time for calling. Some people kept calling the line. Tomorrow you can call into the show and we'll take your calls. See you guys. Thank you.